Hello there, I am Renato, the instructor for the online materials and tutorials on advanced digital signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the UMNL University of Technology to different master's degree level programs. And this notebook is about matched filters. So matched filters are used to reduce the influence of noise, um, usually a deterministic signal. So there's no signal fidelity, it's just a high signal to noise ratio for detection for example in communication applications when you would like to detect a zero or a one or any given known signal so let's get started the goal of the mesh filter is to maximize the signal to noise ratio at the moment of detection with our original signal x and noise v so we have this expression here for signal to noise ratio so we would like to maximize the signal to noise ratio at time of detection using H, M. And to do that, first we assume that V to be independent white noise. Then the denominator of the signal to noise ratio expression is just a scaled fixed power expression. So using our formulation of a matrix V for the noise uh, signal and the row vector H, M for our filter. So again, it contains the time reversed impulse response we obtain these equations here. So remember that the autocorrelation function of noise is a weighted delta function since noise samples are uncorrelated to all their neighboring samples and they are only correlated with themselves and the correlation with itself is simply the noise power. So the autocorrelation matrix E, V transpose times V, has all zero entries, entries except on the diagonal where is uh, the noise power. So the noise power times the identity matrix. The last expression is simply the squared norm, so the sum of the squares of its coefficients of our vector of our filter coefficients h of m multiplied with the noise power. So keeping the above norm of our filter vector constant, we only need to maximize the numerator of our signal to noise um, ratio fraction, so part here. Uh, and we rewrite our numerator um, from here to here, analog to our matrix formulation as a scalar vector multiplication with H of uh, HM as our row vector of the time reversed matched filter impulse response, and now with only one row of the signal matrix A at the time for only one convolution sample at a time. So this signal a row vector is given by this, where L is the size of our filter vector. We then apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which says for two column vectors A and B, and their scalar product, we get this here. So this is also written with the norm A and the a, B, scalar product, like this. This is equivalent to this. So we obtain equality if both vectors are collinear. So if B is equals K times A with some scalar K. And this tells us how to solve the maximization task. We can now apply the cauchy schwarz um, if we set A equals to X of N and B equals to J, uh, HM. So we replace here A by X of N here and B by H M here. So we are going. We are getting this, and we get the equality, the maximum, if we set um, H of uh, M equals to K times X of N, where we can choose the factor as K equals to one. Since we have this inequality for all time steps n of our convolution. We choose n, where the row vector x has the maximum energy. This is where we capture the entire non-zero waveform of our signal x of n with our filter. Since our filter vector hm contains the time reverse impulse response, we obtain the entire time reverse signal as our matched filter, assuming our signal to detect is located between 0 and L. Since we have a convolution of the signal with, with its time reverse version, we get a convolution length of 2 times L minus 1 samples with its maximum at the center when both uh, waveforms completely overlap after L samples. 
which is exactly the signal length. Hence, we get the detection of our signal after we completely received it at the end of our signal. So observe that since we convolve the signal with the time reverse, uh, reverse version of our pattern to be detected, this becomes identical to computing the correlation of the signal with the pattern to be detected. Also observe that the longer the signal is, the more energy is kept in it, and the higher the signal-to-noise ratio will be at the time of detection. And this is very important, for instance, for very weak signals, like in deep space communications. So in conclusion, the matched filter has the shape of the time reverse signal to be searched for. Let's have a um, Python example to understand better the matched filter. So here we are importing matplotlib to plot. We are also using NumPy. And we are defining the signal, our original signal, that we want to detect. It's a ramp. It goes from um, 0 to 1.1. In steps of 0 0.1 and here we have a sample and our value so this is a, our original signal so now we will put this signal to detect at some point in time inside a longer signal so this is what we're doing here now we have our signal to detect inside this longer signal here and then we will add noise so this is the original signal and this is with noise so now we apply our matched uh, filter so here is the impulse response of the matched filter so we are reversing our signal here and when we apply the matched filter so we are using now scipy signal the l filter so we're filtering the signal plus noise which is here with our impulse response here and we get this is the example signal noise after matched filtering. So this is now the output of our matched filter. And we can see that we have a maximum at time 14, which marks the end of our detected signal. And we know that the signal starts at sample 14 minus L, so the length of the filter. So 14 minus 11, so this should be 3, which was indeed the case since we added four zeros in the beginning here. Um, in this case, the matched filter did a good job. So the matched filtering process can also be viewed as computing the correlation of the noisy signal with the original signal. In the following example, we will implement something like a matched filter but using convolution neural networks. So it just serves as a short introduction into neural networks and its terminology we are going to use PyTorch so we will not go in detail here how PyTorch really works but it's more an example to get a short introduction so observe that we got a high peak for detection of our signal but the peak was somewhat broad which makes determining the precise location of the signal more difficult so this is because we specified as a target for our optimization that we want to have a high peak, but not necessarily a narrow peak. To remedy this, we can use numerical optimization instead of our closed form solution for matched filters. So what we will do, we will implement our filter using a one-dimensional convolution layer, which is the Conv1D, by torch, without a bias, without the nonlinear activation function. We also need for this example training signal. So here our signal to detect so rank function and a target signal which is the desired output of the convolutional layer which the op optimization should reach as closely as possible during the optimization or training. So here our training set will be our ramp and our target will be just a um, signal with zeros and a peak one at position 16 which is the same position maximum for our ramp so observe that for the target y we specified a single peak at the position the filter should detect the signal and zeros everywhere else and this also leads to a minimization of the output outside the signal detection. 
and we didn't have this in our closed form solution. So we will specify our convolutional detector layer using OCONV1D, so input channels, output channels, the kernel size, stride, padding, intersetting, bias to false. Observe that the padding equal to kernel size minus 1 leads to a causal filter, meaning that all its inputs are not in the future. So this implements our linear filter as detector. And the op optimization we apply will minimize the mean squared error, which is also called L2 loss function. So we can let the optimization run um, on the same ramp function as before and display the output of the detector uh, when we use as an input the clean no signal and a noise noisy signal. So here uh, is the our example by torch. So here is just an auxiliary function that we are changing dimensions of our input signal or signals to the dimensions that PyTorch is expecting. So here, for example, we have a signal vector like a mono audio, and then we need to add some dimensions, a dimension for our channel, the one channel, and the dimension for the batch. Here, just one batch. And here is how uh, we create the PyTorch model. Here, actually, we put the layers, so we are using the convolutional layer here. The parameters um, must also define here the forward function. Then, here, what we are doing is we have an input signal ramp and we convert to the dimensions that are expected by torch. Our target we also convert. We can see uh, the shapes of our input signal, our target. Then we uh, generate our model here. So, find as a class here, net, our model now, net. We need also to define the loss function, mean square error. Also, need to choose uh, which kind of optimizer. So, we have stochastic gradient descent. We Adam have uh, many uh, different optimizers that are suitable for different things and we also have to define how the experiment will go so we have many epochs then we have here loss function we need to um, also have these steps backward and the optimal step here we can save our model and then here we are having for example when we have a noisy signal so it's a ramp plus noise and then we strained and predict prediction give it an input to the model to see what goes the output so here is how Training goes. This step here is just that we don't want to print a loss every single epoch, but every 100 epochs. So epoch number, loss function, and then we have here, for example, uh, when we have the, we will have our ramp, the clean signal, here is the noisy signal. So this is the weights by towards calculates after training. We see that we obtain these coefficients. So this is a time reversed impulse response, and we see it's a different impulse response than the matched filter. Also, because this optimization is trying to minimize the output outside the detection point, we didn't have uh, this in a matched filter. Match filter was simply the time reverse ramp signal. So now, when we input clean input, would be here clean input uh, x 
here in blue we have the output of our filter is peak here if we use a noisy signal so this the output of our filter in here in orange so the result of the de detection clean and noisy signals observe the peak at the detection point is indeed much more narrow than when we used the uh, meshed filter.